Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. Today we have some entitled parent stories and our first story of the day is by Pokemon95. Be a jerk to fast food staff? Not while I'm here. This story happened two days ago. I live in New York and the latest winter storm was just about to hit. I'm a 25 year old female wearing a big poofy red coat and a black hat with a giant puffball on top, leggings and boots. I'm 5'2", 150 pounds, I look like the cuddly teddy bear that I am. Every day, I walk to work as 1, our car isn't in working condition, and 2, it only takes a half hour to walk there. Plus, I had weight loss surgery a year and a half ago, so walking helps me get some exercise. I was on my way to work just as it started to snow, and I decided to stop by the Burger King that was on the way. I put my mask on and enter the building to get in line. When I walked in, an older woman was having her order taken and an older man was standing near the line. We will call him Chad. I asked Chad if he was on the line. He said yes. A few moments later, a man older than him came out of the bathroom and joined him. We will call him Kevin. Kevin asks, did you order yet? And Chad says, not yet, still in line. Kevin says, seriously, can't these people go any faster? I just want my burger. I'm standing there scrolling on my phone as I wait for the line to move and internally rolling my eyes. The woman finishes having her order taken and Chad and Kevin move up. Kevin says, I want a burger, just a plain burger, that's it. The cashier says, okay sir, that'll be this much. Kevin then says, no wait, he points to Chad, he wants a coffee. Chad says, medium, three cream and three sugar. Kevin says, yeah, and please hurry. Chad pays for the order, and I step up and place my order. I say, I'd like two spicy chicken juniors with onion and tomato, please. I pay for my order and stand to wait for it. Now the time is about 11.30 a.m. Lunch rush is in full swing, and as I don't have to be at work until noon, I don't mind waiting a few minutes. About two minutes pass. Kevin says, can't these R words move any faster? I just want a god darned burger. Hey, can I get my food, please? Chad says, I just want my coffee, they can't even give me that. The staff ignore them and go about their business, getting food out as fast as they can. The woman in front of us gets her food and politely leaves. The cashier places a small to-go bag on the counter, saying, one bacon cheeseburger. I look around, wondering who ordered a bacon cheeseburger. Kevin and Chad are busy talking amongst themselves about how slow and useless the staff are. A moment passes. Kevin says, where is my burger? The cashier says, I apologize, sir. It's right here. She holds up the bag with the bacon burger. That's a bacon cheeseburger. I didn't order no freaking bacon cheeseburger. I asked for a freaking plain burger. Get me my burger. The cashier says, I'm so sorry for the mix up, sir. I'll get it for you right away. Kevin says to Chad, they need to stop hiring our words. At this point, I'd had enough. I'm not okay with people being attacked unless they truly deserve it, and these employees certainly didn't deserve it. I turn to Kevin. You need to lower your voice and speak to them with a bit more respect. Kevin says, excuse me? I say, have you ever worked fast food? Freak no. Then shut your mouth and wait for your food. I'm overheating in my coat, trying to breathe in this stuffy mask, and I'm risking being late for work. Yet you don't hear me complaining. These people are exhausted, they're overworked, they're hot and ache all over, and they're underpaid. You came in here in the middle of the lunch rush. Did you not see the long line of cars outside when you came in? These employees are moving as fast as they can. Unless you can look me in the eye and tell me that you know exactly what they are going through, you need to shut up and learn some manners. You're what, 150 years old? That's plenty of time to learn at least the most basic manners. With that, I thanked the cashier, took my food, and left. I didn't look back to see the look on Kevin or Chad's faces. I'm not good with confrontation, and I was shaking from what I'd just done. But I was very proud of myself. I've never worked in fast food. I'd worked in grocery stores for 11 years before I started to pursue my current career in teaching, but my best friend works in a fast food restaurant, and I can tell you that they most certainly are overworked and underpaid, and customers like Kevin and corporate make them feel like nothing. 
In your guys' thoughts, do you think what OP said here would have resonated with that Kevin? Or do you think people like Kevin are so far gone that once OP left, they just tangented and went back on another tirade? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Dutch and Confused. Made my entitled aunt cry over takeaway chips. A little bit of backstory here. When I was younger, we could celebrate either of my grandparents' birthdays by spending most of the day there, having dinner together, and then going home. Neither of my grandparents were exactly great cooks, so they would always order dinner for the occasion. The grandchildren would get french fries and the adults usually got Chinese food. As a kid, I certainly was not complaining. Now something you need to know is that my dad had two sisters, my aunts. I absolutely love his youngest sister and have always had a close bond with her. There is a large age difference between myself and her children, so I have babysat them from time to time when they were 6 months old. My dad's middle sister is a different story altogether. To use a description my British friends will be familiar with, they are scum class. Their house was always filthy to the point where there was a stack of used diapers bunched under a sofa, cigarette buds on the floor, clothes not being washed. You get the picture. Now, for some godforsaken reason, she spoiled her child absolutely rotten. Perhaps to compensate for the fact that she wouldn't offer them basic hygiene. Anything those children wanted was handed to them on a dinged and dusty silver platter. Now for the story. We were celebrating my granddad's birthday. I am about 12 years old at the time and the oldest of all the grandchildren. This means I have been granted a coveted position at the adult table whilst the children play in the front room. My granddad is discussing what we should order for food this particular time. As per usual, the Chinese takeout menu makes an appearance. Me feeling particularly responsible and eager to prove I belong at the adult table, offer to take down the orders. The adults in the family rattle off their order one by one and I make sure to diligently note down what everyone wants. I am not going to lie, 12 year old me felt powerful. Next, it's time to take the orders for the children. I ask good guy granddad if I can go ask them myself and take it down. He gives me a big grin and ushers me along. Now I set to the task with a fervor of a missionary who has just landed on the shores of a heathen land. I ask my brothers and each of my cousins, yes that includes Entitled Dance Crotch Spawn, what they would like for dinner. Now this gets noted down neatly, even including the name of each person behind their specific order. I run back to good guy grandpa with a sense of pride, as if I had finished my first novel rather than wrote a glorified shopping list. He runs through the list with me and nods approvingly. He asks if I want to be the one who places the order, and boy do I. As I reach for the phone, Entitled Aunt decides this is her moment to shine. She yanks my carefully curated list out of my hand and, not so quickly, reads through it. Moments later, I receive a glare that could have made Ho Chi Minh whimper. Apparently, I have made a grievous mistake. Why is there only five portions of fries on here? Me confused, because there were only five children who were going to eat fries? You must be stupid, can you not count? I can count, there's me, both of my brothers, and your children. What about your youngest cousins? Well, one of them is four months old and can't have solids, and the other one doesn't like fries, so he's eating something different. Entitled Aunt rolls her eyes and snorts with derision. What about my babies? One portion of fries is not going to be enough. These are adult portions. They always give us way too much food and then we have to throw it away after dinner. At this point, Entitled Dan tries to snatch the phone away from me so she can make the call herself. This was her big mistake. I was, and to this day, still am a particularly stubborn person. Couple that with the fact that I did not have a lot going for me as a child, but I had my brain so insulting my intelligence was not something I took kindly to. I duck under her arm and race to the other side of the table, snatching the list as I go. I am not ordering more food, this is enough. Give me that, you little brat. Do you want to spoil my father's birthday and make people go hungry? I respond, I am not ordering more food, this is enough. This back and forth continued in the same sort of way for another 15 minutes. With my good guy grandpa looking on rather bemused, shooting me the occasional wink. Meanwhile, Entitled Aunt is getting more and more irate as I calmly keep telling her, No. 
By the end, she's screaming, her face is red and blotched with a matching vein ready to burst on the forehead. So I do the only logical thing? I run into the bathroom with Entitled Ant in hot pursuit. At this moment, it has become my sole mission to sabotage this woman. I lock the door and dial the number for the takeaway place. Entitled Ant is screaming, demanding I open the door right now, to which I reply, I am on the phone. I loudly and very clearly state my order to the takeaway place and give them good guy grandpa's name, whilst Entitled Ant is banging on the door. When I am finished, I unlock the door and walk past her with a smirk that split my face in half. I go back to good guy grandpa and hand him the phone, delivering the message that dinner will be ready to be collected in about 15 minutes. He ruffles my hair and tells me, thanks sweetheart. Entitled Dan, who was stuck to my heels like a bad smell, looks at this, loses whatever was left of her composure, starts sobbing loudly. She complains to good guy grandpa what a horrible child I am and that he should call the takeaway place back and rectify my order. Good guy grandpa is done with this in about two seconds. He levels with her with a look and calmly states, Entitled Aunt, you have lost in more ways than one. Get yourself together or go home. Entitled Aunt locked herself in an upstairs bedroom for the rest of the evening and refused to speak to anyone. Food arrived about 20 minutes later and as predicted, we had more than enough to feed everyone. Well, I bet they especially had enough food to feed everyone once Entitled Aunt locked themselves in the bedroom and probably left their food for anybody else to pick through. This Entitled Aunt literally seems like the most entitled child manifesting themselves in an adult's body. Imagine a grown ant feeling so entitled about ordering extra fries that when you don't comply, they start crying and lock themselves in an upstairs bedroom. If that isn't the most 13-year-old temper tantrum level stuff you've ever heard. I understand why Entitled Ant would go lock themselves in the upstairs bedroom after that because I'm pretty sure if they stuck around, the consensus would be that they would have to go sit at the kids' table. And our final story of the day is by Insomniac Aesthetic. Entitled Dad at Theme Park Throws Tantrum Over Halloween Candy So once again, some background. I worked at a theme park from 2017 to 2020. I worked on the events team for the majority of that time. Fun fact, I also was a minor in almost all of these situations. Our biggest event every year is called Brick or Treat. It was a Halloween event that ran the entire month of October on the weekends. It was by far our most packed time of the year besides New Year's. Our biggest attraction was The Trail. It was a series of cutely decorated houses that contained some of our employees dressed up in pretty lame costumes passing out candy. It took one to two hours to get through the whole thing depending on how busy it was. Working the entrance of The Trail, we already ran into Entitled Parent who got mad when we didn't give them a bag for candy. The trail was free with the cost of admission, and parents always got mad as if they paid extra for it. We were only allowed to give bags to kids 12 and under, although really it was more like 3 to 12. Yet you would have grown men and women mad that they couldn't be getting a lollipop and a Laffy Taffy. That or they would get a bag for their newborn. Anyways, the trail ran from 2 to 7 p.m. sharp. We rarely opened earlier and we never stayed open later. This was obviously a breeding ground for entitled parents who would arrive just after closing. I had my boss stick me at the entrance or exit every day cause nothing made my day more than arguing with rude parents. At 7, if no one was around, we put up the gate and sat by the entrance until we cleared the trail. Then you would have the moms and dads dragging their children down to us and say, hey let's do the trail. Only for me to say, sorry, our trail is closed. Most people were upset but understood and went to wait for fireworks. However, the entitled parents? They would scream at me and demand I let them down. It's only 7.05, just let us go. And I would have to inform them that it was not only a safety hazard, but our characters are simply no longer on the trail. There's no candy or anything. That or our VIP guests who paid extra to go through the trail privately are about to go down, and since you're not a VIP, you cannot experience it for free just because you were late. Well, one entitled dad did not like that. Let us go down, it's only 7.10. The line was too long earlier and we wanted to go on rides until it went down. 
I'm sorry, sir. Our trail closes at exactly 7 every day. Due to your safety, we cannot let you go down. However, our trail will be open tomorrow for all guests starting at 2 p.m. Then the entitled dad sees the VIP guests exiting the trail and loses his absolute mind. What about them? Why do they get to go down? Sir, those are our VIP guests. They paid extra to experience the trail privately. I used to be a VIP. I've bought VIP so many times that I've come here and this is ridiculous. This is how you treat VIP customers? At this point, I was kind of holding back a laugh. Me and my coworker who was there with me just couldn't get over the irony in what he was saying. If he would have been a VIP this time, he would have gotten to experience the trail, so why was he so angry? It was no one's fault but his. Yet he continued to throw his tantrum and even got his kids in on it. Tell Opish you ruined your day in vacation. Entitled Kid 1 and Entitled Kid 2, you're ruining our vacation. The kids kept mumbling things and crying and about how we should just let them go down the trail. And I just sat there with a smile on my face. Then Entitled Dad pulls out his phone. See? Now you made my kids cry. I'm calling y'all's VIP services. What's your names? Me and coworker proudly display our name tags with crap-eating grins. The dad starts screaming at the guy on the phone, who I low-key think isn't even related to the theme park, and tells him our names but butchers the pronunciation. Anyway, after this witch fit, he proceeds to stomp off after realizing there was quite literally nothing else he could do to us. He mumbled a, sorry boy, she ruined our vacation, to his rude children and ran off. Shortly afterwards, another family came up around 7.40ish and was also turned away from the trail by us, but we supplied them with what my boss calls don't witch bags. These were bags of candy from the trail to give the people who showed up late. Entitled Dad and his kids would have gotten a bag of candy if they had stopped complaining for literally one moment for us to go and grab them a bag, but they were so insistent on getting to go down the trail that we just didn't care anymore. Yeah, I don't really know what this dad could have expected this pressuring to do. You're an employee at a theme park. You don't have any say in when you can and can't do things past the deadline. If there's a cutoff time and you're just an employee, especially when the event wraps up and there's not even an event anymore to experience, what else can you do? The dad was just delusional. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So, until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime channel.